Hey everyone, it's Peter again and welcome to my overview of the immune system. This is a little diagram that I've created that will go over both the innate and the acquired immune system. And I wanted to create it because I was having a lot of trouble in my immunology classes trying to figure out exactly how everything came together. So hopefully I've got it correct and this will help everyone out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by getting rid of my diagram and starting at the very beginning when the pathogen first enters the body. Okay, once a pathogen first enters the body, what's going to happen is the innate immune system is going to kick into, dri kick into drive, okay? So, what's first going to happen is there are various white blood cells that will be you know, moving around. In this case, this is a neutrophil. And on it is located is a PRR, which is a pattern recognition recognition receptor. And what pattern recognition receptors do is they find PAMPs, which are pathogen associated molecular patterns, which are basically like typical patterns that maybe bacteria or fungi will present on their cells and once that the PRR locates a PAMP it's going to let out cytokines and I made them little purple dots over here okay so they let out cytokines and cytokines are basically kind of like how the immune system cells communicate with each other now these cytokines, uh, there are a couple very important ones that are released. Interleukin-1 and tumor necrosis factor alpha. And what they do is they act, let me just erase these first. Hey, they act on the post-capillary venule endothelial cells, so right there. And they'll do three things. The first thing they'll do is create adhesion molecules, okay? So I've colored it in, in light purple under my cursor. And these are chemotaxins, and you'll get to see where these come from, but IL-8, interleukin-8, C5A, and LTB4, leukotriene B4, okay? Now just keep those in mind for now. I'll go over them a little more later. So the first thing they do is chemotaxins are created, which are basically adhesion molecules that will help white blood cells uh, attach to the endothelial lining, then migrate through the endothelium ce endothelial cells into the surrounding tissues towards the pathogen, okay? So, um, another thing they're going to do is they're going to vasodilate the venule, okay? and also uh, bring in an exudate, which is basically like fluid from, from the blood vessel into the surrounding tissue. Now this exudate is very important. It's going to activate four different pathways. Okay, one, two, three, four. Now, I'm going to start with the complement cascade, but I'm not going to talk about it right now because we're going to be talking about it a lot later. Uh, the second one is a coagulation cascade forming thrombin. The third is fibrinolytic cascade, forming plasmin. Then the kinin cascade, eventually forming, uh, forming bradykinin, which is also another vasodilator. Okay. Now, the complement cascade. Now the the complement cascade is activated, and it forms a bunch of complement components. And the, mo the most important ones, uh, for us anyways, are going to be C5A and C3A and C3B, okay? Now C5A, if you notice, is also a chemotaxin, which will help out in the adhesion of white blood cells, okay? And C5A along with C3A also act on mast cells and basophil cells, and what they'll do is cause release of histamine, okay? which is also involved in the inflammatory response. Uh, what it does is increase the permeability of capillaries to white blood cells. So basically, 
this whole system is trying to get the white blood cells towards the pathogen, okay? Now, the next thing uh, I want to talk about is three, C3B. C3B is what's called an opsonin. And basically what that is, is it'll attach to the pathogen and, in a sense, allow various phagocytes, like macrophage, macrophages, to locate, attach, and engulf the pathogen, and then eventually destroy it, okay? Now, we're still on the innate immune system. What if the pathogen enters a human cell? Okay. Now, I'm not actually going to highlight the whole cell yet, because part of it has to do uh, with what I'm going to talk about later. But if the pathogen enters a human cell, sometimes signals, uh, stress signals, are released from the cell. And this can activate n natural killer cells, okay? which will send various chemicals to destroy the human cell, which has the stress signal sending out from it. Okay. So you can see these are all various ways to eliminate the pathogen. But what if these don't work? Well, there luckily is the acquired immune system. The acquired immune system starts off by various white blood cells um, called antigen, pre antigen presenting cells. Now these can either be dendritic cells, macrophages, or B cells. Okay, and what these dendritic uh, sorry what these antigen presenting cells are going to do is they're going to engulf the pathogen, break it up a little bit and then bring the particles up onto its surface using two different receptors, okay? So here they are, MHC2, MHC1. And you can see that the part of the pathogen is presenting on these cells. Now, MHC stands for Major Histocompatibility Complex. And MHCs react with TCRs, which are T cell receptors, okay? So here we have our T cells. Okay. That's a T helper cell, and that's this here is a T, the cytotoxic T cell. Okay. Now I'm just going to go into a little bit about the, well, the interaction between the T cells and the antigen presenting cells because often this is brought into various classes and various tests, okay? First thing I want to talk about is the differences between the T helper cell and the T cytotoxic cell, okay? Um, as you can see, they both have this CD3, which is a cluster of differentiation 3, which recruits the TCR, which is the T cell receptor, okay? They both have it, so there's no differences there. Now, T helper cells have this protein called CD4, whereas the cytotoxic C T cells have CD8. And basically what these cells do, uh, these proteins do is amplify the signal um, that uh, I'll be talking about later, but uh, it amplifies the signal and also interacts between the antigen presenting cell and the T cell. Now, for the T helper cell, to be activated, there need to be need to be two signals. I've talked about the first one, which is a binding of TCR to MHC2, and the second one is a binding of CD28 from the T helper cell, and B7 from the dendritic cell. And these are uh, this is a T cell co-receptor, okay? And they act together to produce the second signal needed to activate the T helper cell. And basically. Uh, This T, T helper cell is the same as TH0, which is a naive T cell, okay? Now, interleukin-2 is, is a various cytokine that causes the proliferation and differentiation of naive T cells, okay? So that's a cytokine, which we talked about earlier, um, is being released in this, uh, in this immunolog immunologic process, okay? So, I'm just going to... 
Now this is a little complicated, I'm sorry about that, but the immune system is a complicated system. Okay, so Th1, uh, Th0, naive T cells, can be differentiated into either Th1 or Th2. Th1 can produce uh, memory T cells or remain as Th1 cells, which will uh, secrete cytokines that will activate macrophages, which will uh, engulf the pathogen once again. Th2 cells can form memory B cells, or they can form what's called B plasma cells, okay? And these will basically be able to create antibodies uh, similar to the antibody uh, that was able to attach to the MHC2, all right? And these antibodies will be able to be created, sent out, and uh, attached to all the pathogens, um, marking them for death, okay? Now, I think I forgot to mention that there are many different uh, lymphocytes, T lymphocytes, in the body, and not all of them will be able to uh, bind to the MHC2 receptor uh, or MHC1 receptor that the antigen-presenting cells will have created. But if they are able to, then that cell will be able to replicate and form this uh, large uh, army of cells to help defeat, to uh, get rid of the pathogen that has been invading this part of the body, okay? So that's why it's so important, uh, this acquired immunity, that uh, it amplifies basically uh, your def defenses for that particular pathogen, okay? Now, I mentioned earlier that you have the two signals here to turn on the T helper cell, but you may also need to know the CTLA-4 uh, to turn off the signal once, uh, once it's gotten going, which basically just replaced CD28 for CTLA-4, okay? Uh, a lot of this, uh, as I mentioned before, may just be too much information, but just try and get the basics from it. It's actually being brought down. Uh, t I've taken out a lot of detail, actually, to just so people can understand. But I mean, it's still a complicated system. Okay, now we're going to talk about the cytotoxic T cells. Okay, now cytotoxic T cells can also act similarly to the uh, natural killer cells of the immune system, and they will be able to recognize cells that human cells that have the pathogen in it already. And what they're going to do is they're going to uh, give a signal to the cell to go through what's called apoptosis or cell death. So that just brings another way for the cell to be destroyed. Alright, so that concludes my uh, first video on the overview of the immune system.